Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here once again on another exciting episode of Making Things with My Mother. But as you can see, we're doing things a little bit differently today. We've gone outside and I'll let my mother tell you why. Hi UXW Bill, I'm <laughs> so excited about today. This is a day that I have looked forward to for a long time. I'm wearing my lucky John C. Campbell Folk School shirt. A big shout out to them. And I'm also wearing my lucky <laughs> leopard skin shoes. So with a day like that, nothing can go wrong. And today we are going to make milk soap. A wonderful soap that we'll use to bathe with, with all natural ingredients. We've got coconut oil here that we're going to use. We've got olive oil here that we're going to use. And chilling in this bowl of ice, we've got some whole milk. We're going to make a wonderful whole milk soap. And a big shout out to the Cold Antler Farm who provided the recipe. So we're going to get started and we're going to start by measuring out some lye on this gram scale that we have here. Everything that we've got, we've laid out. Our molds for the soap are bread loaf pans that have been lined with a plastic garbage bag. And I've prepared four of them. I'm not sure how many we're going to need, but I'm really excited about making soap. Some of the other things that we've got. For first aid, we've got vinegar here, which if we were to get any of the sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, on our skin, which is a strong alkaline, the vinegar would neutralize it. We've got safety glasses to wear, of course. We're outside, so fumes won't be a problem. We've got rubber gloves, a digital thermometer, a heat-proof spoon, a heat-proof glass bowl. We've got a stainless steel non-reactive pan for mixing the lye. We've got some disposable containers to use as containers for some of the ingredients. We've got an immersion blender here for blending our mixture until it starts to trace. And what else have we got here that we need? Paper towel, rubber a gloves. Cup. And of course, once these things are designated for soap use, we won't be using them for anything else. So I'm hoping that this is a start to a wonderful adventure of soap making. And then we can all try it out and lather up, which I think is going to be great. And this soap is going to be color-free, fragrance-free, 100% irritant-free, very natural. So it should be a great soap to use for showering. All right, uh, UXW Bill. Let's get started measuring and weighing out some of these ingredients. All right, we'll be back directly. Oh, yes. Okay, to give you a recipe of how to make this milk soap, and any kind of milk can be used, we're using regular whole milk because that's what we have available. But if you wanted, you could use buttermilk or goat's milk. The first thing that we've done is measure off two pounds of olive oil. And we've used a, a cut-off disposable bottle here just to make cleanup a little bit easier and to have designated soap equipment. So we've got one pound of olive oil already in the bowl. Now it's time to add the second pound. And now it's time to add the second pound of olive oil. So we'll start with two pounds of olive oil in the bowl. And if we didn't want to wash this container out, we could simply recycle it. All right, the next ingredient is coconut oil. And when we got this from the Brambleberry um, Candle uh, Soap Making Supply Company, yes, uh, this coconut oil was a solid. It looked like Crisco. But UXW Bill microwaved it. I don't know so, where the candle making thing came from. So that it would be a liquid. So a big shout out to Brambleberry for such quick service and getting this right off uh, to us. Okay. Something so. very interesting to note about that is that even though it's coconut oil, 
it has no meaningful scent or anything to it. Doesn't smell like coconuts. Doesn't really smell like anything in the slightest. It doesn't smell at all. The only thing that seems to have any smell associated with it is the container that it came in. So Now that was our first pound of uh, coconut oil. These are uh, pound containers of coconut oil. So. And we can confirm that it is in fact a good idea to microwave this because that is how I softened it, basically on very low power in our world famous Panasonic inverter microwave oven. And it looks <laughs> like this great design allows the coconut oil to drain right out. And those can be completely recycled as well. Yes, I do believe so. All right, so we now have olive oil and coconut oil together, and we're going to mix them. And we do want them to be at a certain temperature. So UXW Bill, why don't you uh, shoot a temperature and let's get a reading on this oil. 89 and a half. 89 and a half degrees. All right, so I'm going to lightly stir this to blend the two oils together. They really look to be about the same color and consistency, so you can't see any marbling at all. So, step one, blend the two oils together and make sure that you're measuring very carefully and exactly. All right, here's our oil, and we're going to set it aside. Now what have we got? Got the milk. Now we've reached the part in this particular adventure where you want to be extremely careful because we're getting ready to mix the lye. And for those of you who are not familiar with lye, lye is basically drain opener. It dissolves hair and it will equally ready, readily dissolve important things like eyes and skin and other body parts that you really probably wouldn't want to have dissolved. So don't mess around with lye. Treat it with extreme respect. You can see that my mother has gone ahead and put on some rubber gloves here. She should also be wearing her safety glasses as well. Well, I figured I'm wearing these glasses. I can put the safety glasses over them. Safety glasses are cheap, your eyes are not, like so. This. All right. I here have my sodium hydroxide, a key ingredient in soap making. Also known as lye. Now, the scale just turned off. Push the on button. There you go. Hello. Should still be measuring in ounces. Okay, I need six ounces of lye. I'm using a container here that I won't want to use for anything else. And that I can throw away when I'm done. You got six ounces of it? Now, sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, is extremely reactive with water. So you want to make sure that you don't have your container with any moisture in it. I'm capping this up very tightly, and this measuring cup has a slight amount of residue in it. So I want to be very careful how I rinse that out, and this will only be used for lye now. All right, here is my six ounces of sodium hydroxide, also known as lye. And I'm going to set the scale over here so I have a nice working area. Here, give me the scale. Very nice scale. All right, now for the tricky part, and we're doing this step outside. We have two cups of cold milk in a large bowl of ice water. And because we aren't going to be doing anything else with this measuring cup, I can certainly use that again in my kitchen because all it has in it is milk. This is a very inexpensive stock pot. And it's very important when you're using lye that you use a stainless steel pot for a number of reasons. It's going to get very hot as the lye reacts, and stainless steel is a non-reactive pot. So you wouldn't want to use aluminum or cast iron 
or Teflon coated. It needs to be a stainless steel pot. Now I didn't know how big a one to get, so I went ahead and got a 12 quart because I wanted to make sure that the material wasn't right up against the top rim of the pot. So I have a nice big pot here. I've got my rubber gloves and my safety glasses on. All right. Um, I'm going to take my two cups of very cold milk. This is regular whole milk. And I'm going to pour it into my stock pot. Okay. Now I'm going to keep this ice here because when I add the lye to the milk, the mixture will get very hot. And if I don't want my soap to turn brown, why does it turn brown? The sugars in the milk are actually burning from the lye reaction. So as soon as I get things mixed, I'm going to quickly cool it down in this bowl of ice water by putting this in here so that the milk sugars don't break down. All right, so let's see. What do I do next? So I'm going to very slowly add my six ounces of lye. Very slowly. Very slowly add my six ounces of lye to my stainless steel pot. The fumes, from what I understand, are not anything that you want to breathe. And it will activate and heat up fast. And it's supposed to turn bright yellow. Okay, so, then. So, let's see. After a few minutes of stirring, I'm going to put the saucepan in the ice bath and I'm going to carefully monitor the temperatures because ideally the oil and the milk lye mixture should both be about 100 degrees when mixed together. Degrees Fahrenheit, by the yes. way. All righty. Here we go. Not seeing any change at all. The milk is still white. It's starting to turn about the color yellow of my gloves, if you can believe it. And as I said, part of that color is a chemical reaction. And part of it all right it is most definitely yellow it is yellow okay it activates and heats up fast after a few moments of stirring and we want to make sure it actually looks a little curdly It's starting to steam. Is it? <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, I splashed some. It's hot. The saucepan is quite hot. Isn't chemistry just amazing? All right. So, after. Where's that moments, digital thermometer at? I don't know. Oh, it's in the house. I'll be right back. All right, let's see just how hot this crazy thing is getting here. Oh yeah, 87 degrees on the outside of the pot. 161 and a half inside, that is unbelievable. It ends up in the ice bath, where it'll sit for a little bit. Our oil is supposed to be about the same temperature, about 144 degrees. They should both be somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit when you're doing this. I hope that's not going to melt your bowl. <laughs> I have some questions about that, actually. <laughs> well, you want me to go get some more water and ice? A little more water would be good. We've got our lime mixture cooled down to around 100, but our oil mixture is still a little warm. So we're going to cool that down by immersing it in this ice water for a short bit. And what we want is we want the oil mixture and the lime mixture to be about 
Same 100 temperature. degrees, yes. So tell me, UXW Bill, how quickly is the oil mixture cooling? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Got our ice water there. 139 degrees, so a little, little bit on the slow side. This stuff's right at 100. Okay. And just from a distance, I can tell you right now, the smell of that milk and lye mixture, which I have not been at all close to, is not appealing. <laughs> UXW Bill, you have been a great helper. I see a great future for us in soap making. I don't know. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing some of the troubles that we've had and I'm thinking this video might be best entitled Two Noobs Make Soap. <laughs> All right. Well, what because... we're waiting on right now is before we mix the milk and lye and the oils together, they have to be the same temperature. Right now this is about 99 you said? Yeah. After chilling in the ice bath. The oil on the other hand is a little on the warm side. 133 degrees Fahrenheit. So we need to get that about 30 degrees cooler and we've got it sitting in some ice right now waiting for that to happen. Shouldn't be very long. It's been cooling down at a pretty good clip. But that's why I say two noobs make soap because an experienced soap maker probably wouldn't have problems like this. But we're having a good time. You know, that's what's important. Okay, well maybe by stirring it a little bit I can get it to cool a little bit faster. It's mixing time. <laughs> All right. Our two liquids are right about the same temperature. Okay. Now it does look like this milk has got a little residue on the sides of the pan and even in the spoon. I'm not sure how important that is. We'll give it a stir. All right. I'm now going to pour the oils right here into the milk lye. All right. I will start. You're not supposed to use that spoon doesn't matter now. They're both blended. Okay, I'm going to start by blending just with the spoon. And it's very watery and a little grainy looking. Okay, I want to scrape my sides down really good. And in just a minute, I'm going to use the immersion blender because it's a much higher speed and I want it to get a pudding consistency. So right now you can see it doesn't look like pudding at all. Looks like soup. Looks like a broth, yes. Okay. Got this at the thrift store. consistency. You want to take a look? Now it looks kind of like applesauce. Yeah, it does. What we're doing right now is getting it to trace. And what that means is when it's thick enough that it stays in its shape. So pretty stiff. Now here we are after quite a bit of mixing later. Our soap mixture finally reached approximately the consistency of pudding and started to do what is described as tracing. And as the article my mother downloaded and printed out states, tracing is similar to what you'd see if you have children and 
they got into your pudding, or if you had adults with the mentality of children. You can kind of see what the uh, soap looks like there. It actually does smell kind of soapy at this point. It has that smell that's kind of reminiscent okay, can I have another one of, of a certain kind of soap. So here we go, All another right. mold. I don't know how many of these we're going to fill. We're going to find out. I think you're probably going to fill about two of them, though, if I had to guess. Looks like that guess is about right. Alrighty, now... That almost looks like some kind of uh, tomato soup. Okay, so I think I'll take this spoon, which is now dirty, <laughs> and I'll wipe it clean. Yeah, sometimes stuff gets dirty when you're working in Mother Nature's kitchen. All right, and what I'm going to do is try... And you certainly still want to be plenty careful with this. Yes. Because what's got to happen next is a curing process. It's called saponification. Basically, we let this stuff sit somewhere for about three weeks while it dries out and the lye gradually disappears into the chemical mixture, thus making the soap no longer caustic to use, or dangerous to use, as it probably would be at this point. And we'll be ready to uh, break it up into little bitty squares at that point, try it out, and let you know how it works. Okay, I don't know about you, UXW Bill, but that was a project. All righty. I think we need to set a spell. What do you think? Doesn't sound like a bad idea to me Anytime I can get away with sitting around on the job. <laughs> Here it is three weeks later relative to the events you just saw unfold in this particular video. And as you should be able to clearly see, the soap has undergone an amazing transformation in the time that has passed. It has been separated into bars, something that we used our crinkle cut carrot cutting tool to do and it has also hardened up noticeably. Now, after about the first week, the soap was probably hard enough to actually use, but it was still fairly soft to the touch. Many of you at this point probably have the same questions that my mother and I did about three weeks ago when we concluded the soap making process and set this stuff in a quiet, cool place to dry out and subsequently be cut into bars. You're probably wondering, how does it look? How does it feel? How does it lather when you wash with it? How does it smell? And perhaps even, how does it taste? Okay, maybe not so much on that last one. Well, it has a vaguely greasy feeling to it. This soap could probably still use a little bit of drying out time. Though, as previously mentioned, it has been three weeks since we engaged in the soap making process. It lathers just like regular soap does, with the possible exception that it's still quite a bit softer than a bar of soap you would buy in the store, though I have no idea how long they allow for those to cure. It also makes the water noticeably cloudy when you use it, probably something to do with the milk that was in it. Now, how does it smell? Well, it really doesn't have any smell at all to speak of. It certainly doesn't smell like milk or coconut oil or the, the lye milk reaction that I mentioned in the video. It, it smells vaguely soapy, and that's about it. That's really all I can think of to say. Yeah, I just go ahead and smell it, and it really doesn't have any scent to it to speak of. But I repeat myself. So thank you for watching. Please feel free to leave a comment or a question if you have one, and I will give you an answer if I can at all come up with one.